So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in on a Sunday. My name is Brenna Heinz. I am an admissions dean here, so I am not a current SWATI, but I will be asking SWATI's questions. So today we have five amazing, talented, incredible, kind, uh, just the best SWATI is here joining us and they are going to talk to you about what it's like to be a Swarthmore student, uh, what they were thinking about when they were in your shoes, i.e. looking at colleges, trying to figure out what a good home for them is. And it is your time to ask questions, which a lot of you have already started doing. We are excited. So before we get to your questions, um, we are just going to ask our students to introduce themselves so you know who they are, what they do, um, and we're going to ask them just to briefly in their intros talk a little bit about why they chose Swarthmore, what they were thinking about when they were seniors like many of you. Um, so we are going to get started. I will mute myself as they go and we're going to start. Um, do, 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 where are we starting? Alphabetically, of course, unmuted, ready to go. Hi guys, um, so my name is Atinuke. Um, I'm from South Orange, New Jersey. I'm a junior, I use she, her pronouns. Um, so like I said, I'm a junior, I'm doing a special major. So that's an individualized major in political science, philosophy and economics with a minor in Spanish. Um, in addition, I'm an AVID member, former board member of Swarthmore African Student Society. And um, I've tutored a lot of my time at Swarthmore, both um, with Dare to Soar, where I tutor local kids, and with Petey Green, where I tutor incarcerated students. Um, a little bit about why I chose Swarthmore. Um, I really like the location. I like the idea of a school that is both really scenic and beautiful, but also really accessible and close to a major city. Um, and I ended up really liking the smallest. I went to a really small high school. I thought I wanted to go to a huge college, but I feel like it's really a perfect size um, to where you can see familiar faces, but there's also really diverse people to meet. It's me now. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Jack. Uh, I use he, they pronouns. I am a senior at Swarthmore and I uh, am currently in Swarthmore, but not at Swarthmore. Uh, my family lives in Swarthmore, PA, uh, but I went to high school in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, my majors are in political science and theater. Uh, I'm also pursuing the honors program so I can answer questions that are uh, in that realm. Uh, outside of the classroom, I'm a member of Boy Meets Tractor, the school's sketch comedy group. Um, I am a former co-coordinator, current uh, executive member of Swarthmore's Drama Board. Uh, and I am a uh, member of Swarthmore Career Union, uh, as well as having worked on the Pride Month Committee. Uh, a little bit about why I chose Swarthmore. Um, I also enjoyed the location. Uh, I think having, like, it's, a, it's truly a, a gorgeous campus. Um, it's a registered arboretum, um, but then also having access to all of the things that the city has to offer. Um, it's really the best of both worlds. It's, it's a short train right away. There's really, there's literally a train station right at the foot of campus. So super easy access to the city. Um, in addition to that, SWAT's theater department uh, was uh, definitely a draw as a theater major. Um, not all schools have a theater department and SWAT's is like one of, one of like the best, I would say uh, that's out there. Um, it's really nice. Like, I think as opposed to a conservatory, um, you really get a chance to dip your toes into like whatever things you're interested in, which is really awesome. Uh, I have no idea how long I've been talking, but one more thing is I really enjoy the sense of community uh, at SWAT. Uh, there is a woman who works at our dining hall named Sally, uh, and she has seen every single one of my plays uh, and goes to, and she actually took a class with my roommate uh, one semester. So like everybody in the community is like, a, really feels like there. there's a lot of togetherness when you're all together on campus. Hey everybody, my name is Josephine. I am a senior from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I use she, her pronouns. For academics, my areas of interest include theater, educational studies, and English literature. Just like Jack, I'm a part of the honors program, and I'm also a part of the teaching certification program, if anybody has questions about that. Um, I've completed research in the areas of theater and educational studies, both on and off campus. Um, and currently I'm a teaching assistant for a course on campus. So that means I can be on campus this semester. I'm at Swarthmore currently. Outside of academics, um, I participate in theater both on campus and then off campus in the city of Philadelphia. Just like Jack mentioned, SWAT is very close to Philly. So I've actually been able to like 
work as an active artist and actor in Philly for the past three years. It's been a great opportunity. Um, and then on campus, I participate in music and comedy groups. That's what I kind of do. A little bit about why I chose Swarthmore. Um, I originally didn't, as a senior, didn't think I was going to like it. <laughs> I, th I thought when I was looking at schools that I wanted a large school because I thought that that meant like, oh, lots of research opportunities, lots of connections outside of the campus community. Um, once I visited Swarthmore, I realized that, that uh, those opportunities were still there. Um, after doing a tour, I met with two theater professors. I thought it was going to be a 15 minute meeting. It ended up being two hours because they showed me every inch of the Lang Performing Arts Center. And they explained to me why they chose Swarthmore, both like as a theater department, but then also as a campus community as a whole. Um, I applied and then before I heard yes or no, one of those two theater professors reached out to me um, and asked me, uh, he was doing a set design for Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye uh, at a theater company in Minneapolis. And he said, Josie, would you like to come and like hang out with me and also come to the world opening premiere of this show? And I said, mm -hmm why not? I think, I think, I, I think that might be fun. Um, so I went and I got to meet Toni Morrison at this world opening event. Uh, and when I got accepted to Swarthmore, I knew I had to go because I know that you, although it's a, swar a small community, the connections are endless outside of Swarthmore, but then also the connections that you make once you're here are things for which I'm eternally grateful. And that's why I chose SWAT. I guess I'm up next. Um, hi, my name is Oswaldo. I use he, him pronouns. I'm a senior at Swarthmore. Um, I'm an engineering and environmental studies double major. I uh, was born in Mexico, but I uh, live in Reno, Nevada. Um, I feel like I do this spiel all the time and always forget the things I'm supposed to say. Uh, I participate in theater on, uh, on campus, both academically and through drama board like um, Jeff does. Uh, I perform in different music groups than Josie, but we perform in the same comedy group, which is really fun. Uh, I do a lot of different things with admissions. So I am an admissions fellow, which means I conduct student interviews, um, but I'm also one of the head tour guides for the school. So um, give a lot of tours, which is really fun. Um, I am a President Sustainability Research Fellow, um, which is a program that uh, is both an academic class that students learn how to do research in, but we also do on-campus uh, projects that you get paid for. Um, and my project last year took me to Hawaii, where I um, took a group of students, staff, and faculty to learn about how sustainability is done in Hawaii through indigenous innovations and like uh, organic farming and things like that, mm -hmm. um, which is, have all been really uh really amazing. Um, I'm also a DACA student. So um, if you have any questions about DACA or undocumented uh, support on campus, um, I can provide that. And I think I mentioned engineering. So if you have any engineering questions, um, I can also mention that because the reason that I chose Swarthmore is that I really, really knew I wanted to do engineering, but I also didn't know if I wanted to do engineering. Um, so Swarthmore was a really great place for me to uh, feel out my interest in engineering while also learning about a lot of other things and solidify the fact that yes, I did want to do engineering, um, but also show me all these really great things like environmental studies, um, which I am really, really passionate about. Yeah. Okay, I guess last up is me. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Sonia. Uh, thank you for all being here today. I'm a junior at Swarthmore. I use she, her pronouns, and I am from Singapore originally. I'm at SWAT right now, though I'm on campus. And I'm a double major in political science and philosophy. And apart um, outside of academics, I am a tour guide. I'm also on the varsity women's tennis team. And I'm also a part of one of our pre-professional pre clubs, 180 Degrees Consulting. We work um, doing consulting work for nonprofits. And then finally, I'm a part of actually our largest club on campus, which is I-20, our international students club. And I'm on the board of I-20. And a couple of the reasons that I chose SWAT, actually very similar to Josie in the sense that I initially wasn't sure I would like SWAT. Um, and after visiting, same as Josie, I fell in love with the campus. I learned about all the amazing resources that students had access to and the kind of community that SWAT was. And so really what it came down to at the end of the day was the kind of academic and also social environment that Swarthmore fosters. I really, really wanted that collaborative learning environment and that interaction with my peers and my professors. 
And so that was really what stood out about Swarthmore to me. And two, two and a half years later, I'm, I'm so happy because everything that I had hoped for came true and even more at SWAT. So yeah, the environment is really what made it special for me. Um, thank you all. Um, so I, I know you're seeing this. We have a lot of questions coming in. So um, all of you talked about all of these amazing things that you do. You all uh, just seem super involved. And so we're getting a lot of questions about what is school life balance like, right? What are fun things that you do? Do you have <laughs> balance in your life? Um, some of the favorite kind of traditions or things that you're involved in um, and how you manage that as a Swarthmore student. So uh, I'm sure a few of you can take this, all of you can take this question, but a few of you if you want to jump in. I'll do it. Uh, um, so we're talking work-life balance. Um, yeah, I think uh, coming into Swarthmore, uh, I, I had a, like a sense of what the workload was gonna be like. Um, I think ultimately like you're not gonna be, uh, I, don't, I don't think any like academic experience fully prepares you for college or for Swarthmore in particular. I think no matter what Swarthmore is gonna be definitely a step up. Um, but what I'll say is that like, that's not a bad thing because it, uh, forces you to like reach your highest heights. And also you're given all of the resources that you're ever gonna need um, to succeed here. Um, that includes uh, like a lot of uh, resources within your dorm as well as within your department. Um, one person who can really help you out with things like time management uh, are your SAMs, your student academic mentors. Um, they are super friendly. They're there specifically to help you out with picking classes, uh, figuring out when to do your homework, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but time management is a, a skill that if you don't already have it, you're definitely going to learn more at Swarthmore. Um, it's just sort of a skill that you uh, eventually come to because of all of the, the stuff that you end up doing. Um, yeah, so, so I would say that like in a typical week at SWAT, um, I have around and I'll, I'll, I'll preface this by saying theater kids have sometimes weird schedules um but I'll usually have around um uh, eight to 12 hours of class um and outside of class I will do another like four to six hours of homework uh sometimes more when it's like midterm season or I have a paper due um, but four to six feels like kind of the sweet spot for like how much uh, I would do in like a typical week. Um, that includes readings, that includes uh, like responses, sometimes problem sets if you're in the STEM department. Um, and uh, I, I feel usually that I have enough time outside of class to like do things that I enjoy, spend time with friends. Um, the key is that sometimes you can also combine those things. Uh, I spend a lot of nights, uh, even now I'll, I'll get on like Zoom study sessions with my friends where we'll all be like sort of sitting together silently like typing, but we'll all be together and hanging out and then we'll able to be like, be able to crack a joke every once in a while. Um, so you can have those, you can also have nights that are totally like free of anything where you get to just goof off a little bit. Uh, and I definitely don't feel like that's hard to achieve uh, as long as th that's something that you like want in your schedule. Yeah, um, I'll add a couple things onto what Jack just mentioned. Um, I think one of the big differences between being a student in college and being a student in high school is that, and Jack kind of touched on this a little bit, is that you actually have a lot more freedom in college in terms of what you can do and what you can be involved in. And this does come from the difference in time. So one thing that's really huge is that in high school, you're used to having eight hours of class a day. And in college, as Jack mentioned, sometimes his weeks are eight hours of class a week. So there's a huge difference in terms of your actual time in a classroom. And so that opens up a lot of more, a lot more opportunities for you to get involved in different areas outside of your class. And so I don't want to generalize for all SWATIs, but a lot of SWATIs are heavily involved in 
certain areas. So for some of us, you know, we've talked about theater and athletics for me. So a lot of SWATIs will find things that they're passionate about outside of the classroom and use their extra time to be involved in those areas. So while the work that you're doing is a step up from high school and the content is more challenging, it's really rewarding because you get to be involved in things outside of the classroom that you have more time for and you can put effort into those things. So I think that there's a huge work-life balance, but it's really nice. And it for me, it was much more of an improvement from high school because I had the time and energy to put into my homework, which I really enjoyed because I could do that with, with my friends or my classmates. I had time for, for athletics for me, but I could also do other things like be a tour guide and um, you know be in a club and things like that. So I think for a lot of us, the work-life balance is actually a lot better than high school. Awesome. Thank you. So speaking of, right, this, this transition is big, right? High school is really different from college. Um, can a few of you talk about how SWAT supports students in their transition from high school? And I know that Swarthmore has lots of different ways that they support students and you all, I'm sure, have interacted with lots of different ones. So if a few of you could chat about that. Sure, I can. Um, I think one of the things I always have to talk about when talking about the transition to college is pass fail. Um, it really is something that I took for granted and it really is something that helped me and I'm sure my fellow panelists would agree um, in the transition to college. So for those of you that don't know, um, Swarthmore has a pass fail system, meaning um, for your first semester, um, as a first year, you do not get any grades. Um, you only pass or you fail and the bar to pass is pretty low. So it's very much in place for you to be able to focus on kind of the other aspects of getting used to college because you know not everyone has lived with a roommate before um you know you might want to um, get used to that or figure out um and I think it kind of goes back to the last question and figure out a work life balance for me with pass fail it gave me the chance to say hey you know what I want to go to Philly this weekend I don't have to really freak out or worry about what the consequences would be so I was allowed to both kind of explore the community around me um figure out what extracurriculars I want to do sign up for a bunch of extracurriculars and um you know see which ones I want to go to, um, try different classes, and maybe even pick out classes that I otherwise wouldn't pick out, really challenge myself and step outside of my comfort zone. All of this is definitely made possible, at least for me, through pass fail, because without having that additional weight of grades, um, you know, it really freed me up to um, make that transition. Um, and one thing I will say is that it really paves the way for kind of a lack of emphasis on grades that really does follow through even when you do start getting grades. Um, I really, um, coming from a kind of competitive high school, it was really refreshing to, um, you know, sit with my peers and just talk about what they were learning for the sake of learning. And I was really nervous, um, I guess, transitioning from pass fail to actually having grades. Um, I remember being a first year and being like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to do this. And every single upperclassman I talked to was like, you're going to be absolutely fine. And they were completely right. It was like, I barely noticed. Um, it really is a smooth transition and I think um, pass fail is really um, really instrumental in that for me at least. Adding on to that um, I think that uh, sometimes we take our professors for granted but I think a lot of the um, first year professors especially understand that students are coming from all over the place. Um, I mean, I came from a really large public high school um, where I didn't really have the opportunities to talk to my teachers that much or really talk to guidance counselors. Um, but professors are really willing um, to help you figure out uh, what your study habits should look like. Um, I even had a, a professor who sent us a schedule about how they felt we should uh, handle their class load so that we're not doing it all in one day or stressing ourselves out about it. Um, there's also, I think one really nice thing is there's a lot of uh, TAs for classes, teaching assistants, um, and TAs are usually students who've taken the classes, especially in STEM. So you might have, um, in math, they're called pirates because of the word pi and rate. Um, in computer science, they might be called ninjas, in engineering, they're called wizards. Um, they're students who've taken the classes before and understand what the rigor is like, understand what the professor wants from them. Um, so it makes it really easy to know exactly what you're supposed to be doing in your classes. Um, and yeah, at Nuke, speaking on pass fail is really, really, really nice. I think pass fail is also a really good opportunity to take things that you've never taken before. And I took a French class, um, actually also with Josie, uh, um, which was interesting for me because I hadn't taken much French. I really didn't even know how to speak it at all. Um, but I was put into this class where we only spoke French. Um, and it really pushed me to try my hardest without being afraid of failure um, because I had pass fail.
Um, any other, I'm wondering if any of you have advice for, uh, for students about support systems to look out for that maybe you didn't even know to look out for when you were in high school. I know that was my experience. I just didn't know that this stuff existed. Um, so any things that have like surprised you or you've discovered at SWAT that have been really helpful to you in either creating community, academic support, like any type of support broadly? have one specific one, but I think it's transformed my uh, work as a student the most. Um, the uh, Swarthmore has a program uh, called the Writing Associates Program, which is students are uh, students are selected uh, and then trained to help their peers write. So there's an office on campus where like students literally who have been trained by the faculty in the English department to like have their own office and then like have students come and have somebody else like look at their work. Um, and I think I didn't even realize like how big of a deal this was or how nice of a deal this was until like I was sitting at, uh, my paper was due at 11.59 p.m. And I realized at 8 p.m. that evening that I didn't know how to do MLA format. This was my first year, I've since learned. Um, but I realized, I was like, I don't know if the period goes before the parentheses or in the parentheses. And my friend with whom I was working said, Josie, just go to the writing associates office. I was like, okay. So I walked over and this student like just sat down with me and was like, how can I help you? Not like just telling me exactly how to do it, but like telling, and they gave me a space in which I could be like, I have this one question about MLA format, but I also have like an overall structural question about my paper. Um, and writing associates are also like tied into some courses. So actually in some of your courses, you are required to like work with another student to like go through your thesis and like go through your um, outline to make sure like the structure is right before you embark on writing. Um, and I know that just for me, because I've had a lot of writing heavy courses that having somebody there to just look at it and it, it be a peer is something that I've really appreciated and kind of has emphasized this community of learners that like Swarthmore has all over its website, but I can say is really true that like we're all learning together and like the learning can happen outside of the professor and student dynamic. Um, yeah, to add on to that, I would also say um, I mean, Josie, you just mentioned the professor student dynamic. Uh, I would say that the professor uh, is an underrated resource at SWAT. I'm, I'm still sort of learning, uh, even in my senior year, that like how excited our professors are to talk to us. Um, like, uh, so SWAT is a, a just undergraduate institution. So uh, the reason that our professors are here is specifically because they like to work with undergraduate students. Um, so I think something that I definitely didn't utilize basically at all my first year and that I've like slowly started to get better at is like engaging with my professors in like their office hours, which they host every week, um, or asking to do research with them, which they are usually more than happy to do. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities to get to know your professors, um, and to learn from them both about stuff in the field and about just like academic life in general. They are some really, really great resources. and. All the professors uh, I've interacted with are amazing people. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of just like utilizing your professors. Nice, so speaking of professors, um, I'm wondering if we can talk a little bit about academics. So we have lots of questions around academics in here. So um, I'm wondering, I guess first, if a few of you could talk about the process of declaring your major. So how do you go about even figuring out what you want to major in? How does that work at Swarthmore? And then, um, so this will be a few answers. We have, I'm sure many students who are attending this webinar know that we have honors majors and course majors, and we have honors majors here and course majors here. So can a few of you talk about this process and then our, you know, our honors majors and our course majors talking about why you chose those different paths? I can give a brief rundown or like schedule of how students typically like declare, choose and then declare their majors. 
Um, so like at other institutions, like students walk in and then like during their first year are like, yeah, I am like an accounting major and that's it. And then like for the rest of their time, they're an accounting major. At Swarthmore, you can walk in with your own interests, but you don't declare your major until the uh, second semester of your sophomore year. So really you're given a year and a half, a year and a half and some change to figure out what you want to take, what interests do you have? Um, and ultimately, like, there are a couple, like, although, like, you make this choice during the end of your sophomore year, you're not tied to the choice that you make. I am right now as a senior figuring out, okay, like, what do I call my majors and minors? Uh, how, how do I define what I'm doing? Um, because I'm taking all the courses, I just need to see how they fit. And the professors and the, uh, the advisors with whom I'm working have been really supportive in that way. Um, and I can also speak a little bit to like the difference between a course major and an honors major. It's at other institutions, honors programs are like programs you apply to, uh, to which you apply when you're applying to the institution itself, like when you're before you're going to the school. Um, in that sophomore end of sophomore decision you make while you're choosing your majors and minors, you'll go on your uh, My Swarthmore, your own individual website, and just click, I want to do honors. It's not a separate application. It's not anything big. Um, students who choose honors really want to get specific with one area of their uh, one area of their subject. Um, so I think the biggest difference between a course major and an honors major, a course major allows you to get a really wide range of knowledge in a subject, and the honors program allows you to go really deep in one specific area. Um, and now like as an honors major in theater, I am getting to really decide how I want to get specific. Uh, and that allow I get to choose like three different areas that I want to get really specific, become an expert in. Um, and then by the time at the end of my senior year, I will have several experts in my areas of specificity come and judge my work. And when I say judge my work, I don't mean they'll like give me a gold medal like, oh, Josie, you knew the answers. Oh, you performed your piece so well. They'll come and like watch my acting performance for my acting capstone thesis. And then they'll have a conversation with me afterwards to be to say, hey, Josie, why did you choose that choice? Or, hey, Josie, did you ever think about in your educational studies honors minor, uh, considering the uh, scope or the parameters about about whom you are considering? So, like, I'm really excited for those conversations. And after speaking to some people who have pursued honors, that's the best part of honors is those conversations with experts in the area. I'm really excited for them, but also a little nervous, ultimately excited. I can talk a little bit about my experience doing a special major. Um, so um, kind of echoing what Josephine said, um, Swarthmore is definitely not the place where you have to come in declared. In fact, you literally can't. Um, and I came in thinking I was going to be a linguistics major. That was it. And for some reason, I had it in my head that changing my major would be quitting. I don't know why, but I was really averse to the idea of quit changing my major. I was like, I'm doing linguistics. I'm doing honors linguistics. This is what I'm going to do. No one can change my mind. So, you know, I took a lot of linguistics classes. I took them in pass fail. I took them into my first and second semester all the way into my first um, semester of my sophomore year. Um, and I really enjoyed it, um, but it turned out that linguistics wasn't exactly what I wanted to study. Um, I was also taking a political science class called Capitalism and Socialism that I almost quit in the first um, class because we had to read 300 pages of The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. I was like, oh my gosh, there's no way I can do this. Um, but I ended up staying and ended up being probably one of my favorite classes that I'd ever taken. And one day after class, um, I just said to my professor, is there any way that I can just major in all of this? I didn't want to major in political science. I wanted to major in whatever we were doing in that class. Um, and it, he introduced me to a few other students. Some of them were in my class already who were doing um, the PPE or political science, philosophy and economics um, special major. Um, and we all would kind of talk and compare notes. And that's kind of how I started on the special major journey. I was definitely intimidated. I felt like I was too late to change my major, which I definitely wasn't. Your, you know, your first semester of sophomore year is prime time for doing that or even later. Um, and for my special major, what it really entailed was getting to know a lot of different departments. Um, so how special majors work at SWAT is that if you have a special major, say it's called 
say it's architecture and you're doing a combination of engineering and art. I know people have done that. You have to get approval from every single department that you're involving in your major. So what for me, what that meant was I had to go to the department head of political science, of philosophy and economics, and make sure that they approved in my course load. So with special major, you're not just looking at the list of classes and being like, mm, I want that one, that one, that one, that one. They kind of all have to have a relationship. They have to work together and they have to all kind of um, flow and you know you have to have a kind of common goal in sight so um it's definitely not random and i had a lot of input again from all these professors i had my advisor um and i had you know all these other faculty that i was going to visit and asking for their approval and through this process over the course of a few months i was able to pick the classes and finalize the classes that i want you know in the order that i wanted them in the years that they were occurring um, and after that, I got signatures from every single department. Now, of course, this document, like Josie said, your sophomore year, you do your sophomore plan. This is not final. I could still change my mind as long as I'm, you know, fitting within those these requirements. But it's been a really, really rich experience. Um, I'd say probably I'm about halfway through, um, but I've just really felt supported by all the faculty, even the faculty that are not kind of in my main department. I'm mainly focused in political science. Um, so, um, for example, I have an advisor who was that professor that taught me that first class, um, but I also have an advisor who's, I think, they're going to be the now the department head of political science. And he's a really, really busy guy. I remember when I first went to meet him, some other students told me, like, he eats lunch at this time, like, this is how you have to find him. He was super busy and involved, um, but he's been really helpful. At the beginning of the semester, he reached out to me via email and asked if there was anything he need, I needed or if I needed to, um, you know, meet with him, we ended up meeting. And it was really, really great to have this like department head um, that's super busy, that's involved with so many other things. He's involved with like the Lang Center, which is um, like our, you know, our center for um, civic engagement involved with so many different things, um, you know, reach out to me and make sure that I was doing well in my special major. That's the kind of thing that happens at SWAT. And I feel like with my special major, um, you know, I definitely needed a lot of guidance and I definitely got it and will continue to get it. So yeah, that's a mouthful, but it's been a really, really, really rich experience. And for any of you that um, want to major in something that you don't quite see on, you know, the list, um, the world is really yours. As long as you can, you know, make a coherent list of classes and find professors that are really behind what you're doing, it is totally doable. Awesome, thank you. So we, we've gotten so many questions about um, sort of uh, the curriculum, the flexibility, and many of you have touched on that. And what makes SWAT special, which you have talked about pass fail and how we can create our own majors here. Um, one thing we haven't talked about, which I think Oswaldo might be great to talk about is engineering. Another thing that makes SWAT pretty unique is the fact that we are a liberal arts college that has engineering. So Oswaldo, would you mind talking a little bit about what it means to be in engineering at a liberal arts college? Of course. Um, I think uh, one really great part of the engineering program is that it really models the liberal arts experience as well. Um, so it's worth more you don't like I'm not going to graduate with a major in electrical engineering or computer engineering. I'm getting a general engineering degree. Um, this is because the Swarthmore major asks you to take uh, what we call our core engineering classes, which is a little bit of civil engineering, a little bit of electrical, a little bit of mechanical, some computer in there, um, to really create a well-rounded uh, engineering student. I think our engineering department understands um, that once you graduate, you're most likely going to work in a team unless you're really, really smart and create this company all by yourself and do all of the work yourself, which you can do. Um, but more than likely, you're going to be working with other engineers. And it's really nice to have that background of, okay, if I'm doing this electrical engineering project, what are the mechanical implications of it? What are other implications of it? Um, I really like the engineering program. And um, it's also really nice because uh, at the end of my four years here, I will come out with a Bachelor of Science in Engineering. It's not a 3-2 program or a 4-1 program where I have to leave all my friends um, and go study nothing but engineering for one or two years. Um, I'm learning engineering alongside learning all my other classes. Um, Swarthmore's engineering program, I think, is the most um, credit heavy uh, program at Swarthmore because it's um, not only do you need to take your engineering classes, but you also take some math and um, sciences to uh, cover uh, um, our certification process. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't double major. And I think around half of the engineering students actually are double majors. Um, so I'm double majoring in environmental studies as well, um, because that's another thing I'm really passionate about. Um, and it's not just because I'm environmental engineering is an easy thing to do in the middle, 
they're actually separate. My environmental studies area is more around education and access, and my engineering focus is more around computer engineering. So they're not at all related, but I'm still able to do both of them. Um, and then a lot of students will choose to do like engineering and music or engineering and theater because um, I mean, if you come to Swarthmore, you want to learn a lot of things. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think that's that's what I would say about the engineering major. Awesome, thank you. Um, so going along with sort of academics and preparing you to do things like engineering, um, can a few of you talk about how SWAT preps students for careers um, or anything you wanna do after SWAT? So any pre-professional um, jobs, internships, externships, all of, all of the above. Yeah, I guess I can start off by talking a little bit about um, one resource that is super important for a lot of Swarthmore students, and that's our Career Services Center. So Career Services has a super broad range of students. So that ranges from having a, a really, really extensive place where students can connect with alumni based on where they're working, the industries that they're working, what majors they were in college, where they are located, things like that to having um, smaller but still really significant resources. For example, having a career closet where if you have an interview to prepare for and you need a suit or a suit jacket or something like that, you can borrow one from our career services center um, all the way to having um, an externship program, which is really incredible for a lot of Swatties. So the externship program at Swarthmore is a way for current students to shadow an alumni at their place of work for about a week over the winter break. And this is something that is accessible to every SWATI. So you basically just apply to the program and you demonstrate what you're interested in. So maybe you're interested in shadowing a lawyer or some sort of doctor or really anyone in any um, profession. And SWAT will match you up with an alumni that's in that area. And you get a chance to, to see what their work life is about, to see the kind of work that they do. And so this is really helpful for SWATIs both ways, one to kind of see whether something that they're interested in would really work out as a profession for them, but then also to see what maybe they're not super interested in. So that's a nice hands-on way to get um, experience in the work world. And I have a lot of friends that have actually had an externship experience that has then been converted into an internship internship experience. They've, they've been with an alumni and they've developed a really good relationship with them. And so that alum has said, hey, you know what, why don't you come back over the summer for a more prop, a full-time internship? And so that's one of our biggest resources is our alumni and our externship program. And I'm, I'm sure someone else can add on to that, but the Career Service Center is really incredible. And they also do things like resume workshops and um, writing cover letters and, or a CV or things like that. I think professors, like I agree with you, Sonia, professors are a huge resource. Like the faculty and staff at Swarthmore are extremely well connected. And I can say just uh, for the professors uh, that I, for with whom I'm taking courses, uh, they're experts in their fields. Like they are doing research and they are working on projects that are like at the forefront of the field. Um, and the really cool thing is uh, they are doing these projects and they are conducting this research and they need people to help. So although Swarthmore is a small liberal arts college, there is a lot of research being done on campus, but then there's also a lot of research and projects that are happening off campus. So the two research opportunities I've had at Swarthmore, uh, one was at NYU with a Swarthmore professor. So like I was doing a Swarthmore related project, but over at NYU for a summer. And then I was doing a theater, pro a theater research project for a professor's theater company. And it also impacted the, my own work um, for one of my theses. So in general, like professors are here and they are doing their own work. If you can collaborate with them or help them in any way, it helps you fine tune what you wanna ultimately do. And I can say that a lot of the research opportunities that I've had at Swarthmore have helped me kind of fine tune what I wanna do ultimately, which is pursue graduate school after my senior year. A lot of Swatties end up doing some form of graduate school. Uh, I think it's like, 
I don't know the st st statistic, excuse me. I think it's like around 85% within five years after they graduate or in some form of graduate study. Um, and I can say that a lot of my friends, like current seniors are thinking about grad school, whether that's law school or med school, like it's in their forefront. And it's really nice that like when they're completing their applications, that the work that they've already done at Swarthmore can aid their application. So if they need to see a writing sample, oh, I can just look at my dramaturgy class work and like submit that from last semester. Um, Swarthmore, like the professors really kind of help you fine tune your strengths, but then also like give you work that you can use for your applications. Awesome, thanks. So um, we've been getting lots of questions along this line of kind of experiential learning broadly. And I know you all are have done this in a variety of ways. Um, we're getting a lot of questions about sort of study abroad um, opportunities in specifically around performing arts, music and theater. So uh, can a few of you uh, just give some more examples of like cool things that you've done and how you've gone about actually doing these <laughs> things that we all talk about in admissions, but like what are students actually doing? Uh, yeah, I, I can talk a little bit about that. I personally uh, have not studied abroad. Um, you guys might be surprised to find out that uh, theater is actually one of the most uh, comprehensive majors in terms of required credits. Um, so there's a lot of classes that we have to take here at SWAT. Um, but I do have a, a friend who is a, a another special major uh, who is majoring in uh, acting for the screen and the stage uh, is the name of her major. And she got to do this really great uh, experience in Prague uh, where she went to, I think she studied at a film school um, and got to do all of this acting and, and wasn't, wasn't just uh, acting on film, but was also like, you know, practicing setting up for shoots uh, and got to direct and got, she also got to meet some really, sounds like great friends and people who were really great to connect with and learn from, from all over uh, in terms of their perspectives on what acting is. So that sounded like it was a really cool experience. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about uh, uh, study study abroad myself, especially in relation to theater. So if someone else wants to take the mic for me, please do. Uh, just like Jack, as a as an honors theater major, I haven't studied abroad myself. How because of like how the department or how the major really requires you to take courses on Swarthmore's campus. I have really wanted to experience some abroad opportunities. So I've kind of created my own. And when I say abroad, I'm not like going out of the country. I'm like leaving Swarthmore's campus. And I think that's how a lot of Swatties view like going into Philly. Like it's a little excursion. They get to go for like the weekend. They just go for an afternoon. They do a field trip with their class. I've really treated a lot of the experiences I've had in Philly as like kind of a a step away from the bubble. I absolutely love the Swarthmore bubble. I've stayed here for three years. However, it's nice every once in a while, like to take a break from your studies or to like, just go have fun with some of your friends. Um, speaking to like some of the theatrical or arts related uh, things I've done off campus. Um, a lot of, a lot of Swarthmore alums from the theater and music and dance departments uh, are still in Philly doing shows, creating art. And so they'll like ask current students to come help them. So the first show I did in Philly, uh, an alum was like, I need a short woman. And the department says, we have one. And so for my entire sophomore fall, I was in a show in Philly celebrating like the beauty and identity of American Jewish women. Um, and I think that like, if you don't wanna be in a show, there's still several ways for you to experience art in Philadelphia. Um, Swarthmore has like a lot of, uh, raffles. Some are just like raffle. If you enter your name, you can win a uh, SEPTA ticket, some train tickets to go into Philly for the weekend. We also have like a Broadway, uh, like there's Broadway traveling shows that come to Philadelphia and you can just put your name into the mix. And if you win a ticket, you win a ticket and you get to go see a show for free. So like you're able to go participate in theater, observe theater without having to like pay for any of it. So the cash free campus system that Swarthmore has extends past Swarthmore's like campus limits. 
I'm really glad you um, brought that up, Josie. So just and and just so um, students on here know, about 45% of Swatis do study abroad. So it is a it is a thing that many students do. They're not currently doing it because of COVID, um, but it is really available. But um, you're right, students access things off off of Swarthmore's campus because we are so close to Philadelphia. So in case um, you don't know, we are on the the train system um, to Philly. So like I am in my apartment right now in Philadelphia. I work at Swarthmore. Um, it is a 30 minute at most train ride. So our students do use that often. Um, and part of our local community is our Tri College Consortium. Um, so we are, we're running up on time. And so quickly, can anyone talk about um, if they've accessed the Trico, what that means and how they have accessed that? I have, um, I answered this in the chat window, but I can, uh, I said someone asked a question about this, but I can go into it a little bit more. I took a class at Haverford my sophomore year, uh, multivariable calculus. I took one last year. Um, it was, uh, what class did I take? Oh, Indigenous Peoples in the Environment. Um, and I'm taking one this year called Decolonial Science and Technology. Um, both of those two were at Bryn Mawr. Um, I really enjoy the Trico. I think one really nice thing is uh, if you want to, um, like, I think 16, even though there's a small community at Swarthmore, sometimes people do feel like they've met everyone or that they want to meet new people. Um, and there are two colleges that are 30 minutes away from us in which you can talk to so many new people. Um, I really enjoy the community conversations that I have in my Bryn Mawr classes. Um, I also like being able to use like their libraries and their uh, their um, dining halls and just go to their study spaces. Um, I, the Bryn Mawr and Haverford both have so many things to offer. Um, they have speakers that come to campus. I remember going to Haverford to go to a series on, um, to hear the people from the Lenape of Pennsylvania, which is the original peoples of Pennsylvania. They were giving a talk on um, like what their community is doing and how they're uh, trying to recreate uh, um, community relationships with other groups and things like that. So I found that really interesting. Um, and yeah, it's really, really easy to take classes within the Trico. You literally just have to fill out a piece of paper and then turn that in. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Um, and I guess speaking of like community and also I'm glad Oswaldo, you brought that up. We are, we're located on the unceded land of Lenang Lenape people. Like this is, this is their land. This is not our land. Um, and so it's really important to acknowledge that when we're sort of talking about where we're located and the benefits of a beautiful Arboretum campus, the benefits of, of where we are in the United States, right? Um, but speaking of sort of community, there are some questions about culture. Um, so what, like, what's the culture like broadly on campus? Um, is Swarthmore an inclusive place? Um, there have been a lot of students asking specifically about, um, is it inclusive for LGBTQ plus folks? Um, so broadly speaking, like, what is the culture like? Is this an inclusive <laughs> campus? Feels uh, pretty inclusive to me uh, personally. Uh, but obviously I, I only have one perspective. I think fr from, from uh, the perspective of, of <clears throat> someone who identifies as queer, uh, I, I find that the life at SWAT is very, very easy. Um, I, as I said, I'm a part of Swarthmore Queer Union. I used to be uh, a board member. I used to be their treasurer. Um, I took a little bit of a step back for that, from that uh, going into my senior year because there's a lot of other stuff to worry about now. Um, but uh, it's, it's definitely like SKU, uh, which is the shortened version of Swarthmore Queer Union, has uh, weekly uh, or has regular meetings. Uh, I don't know if they're weekly anymore, um, where like any student who wants to can come together and they, they have little like fun events and they'll get together and uh, sometimes have just like discussion meetings about like what it is like to be queer at SWAT or um, generally like different aspects of, of uh, life as a queer or trans person. Um, what we've, what, what, what I found like, at least while I was like a more active member and, and on the board was that not a lot of people came to our meetings, which honestly I see as a good thing. Um, to me, it seems like a, not a lot of people needed that sort of second layer of support. Uh, obviously it's always good to have them. It's not like SKU is ever in danger of disbanding, um, but it like, it definitely 
it's it's nice to see that pe most people feel like they can just go about their lives and they don't feel that need to like have somewhere else to go to uh to like vent about their problems because they can talk to any of their friends about their uh their problems which which is really really nice um yeah and and uh i'll i'll, I'll leave it to other people to um to, to talk about other groups and and other communities but uh, there's all sorts of, of different like student groups uh, related to like culture, religion, um, and I de definitely de feels like everybody uh, has has their space if if they need it, which is really nice. Okay, <laughs> just making sure no one else wanted to jump in. Um, Okay, so we're we're running up on our time. So I want to give I want to give the panelists a preview of our last question because this has been asked a lot, and it will be what's your favorite tradition. So I'll ask everyone to go around and do that last. But before that, I think we have time for maybe one more. Um, we've actually been getting a lot of questions about COVID, and so um, how have you experienced COVID as it relates to you being a Swarthmore student? Um, how flexible have professors been? What are online classes like? Uh, do you have activities? Do you have friends? <laughs> do, do you do things? Um, how is that working? How are you feeling supported by Swarthmore during this? I think I can probably answer this from the perspective of a student who's on campus. Um, so uh, for the fall semester, the school's policy was that freshmen and sophomores would be allowed back on campus um, and uh, juniors and seniors could petition to also be on campus um, and for the spring it's the flip side of that so juniors and seniors will be on campus um, freshmen and sophomores who need housing can petition um, I think that's really nice because I think when I came in as a freshman I really needed to be on campus and utilize resources and talk to people so it was really nice that first years also got to be in person if they wanted to have that like in-person environment and have socially distanced classes, but still working with other people in the same rooms. Um, I really, I, I thought that was a really good on, on part of the school. Um, and on the same end, we have seniors will be on campus for their spring um, if they need to do some comprehensive end of end of their major um, like thesis or work or something like that. Um, I'm really glad that Swarthmore was able to give me housing because I think I really needed a place where I could study and do my classes. Um, and I have that. I'm also, um, they also, every student is in a single. So although there are doubles and triples on campus um, for social distancing policies, we're all in separate rooms. Um, and I, I've been, I've felt really comfortable walking around campus that um, like I'm safe, the people around me are being safe, that we're upholding, we called the Garnet Pledge, which is what we, um, I'll agree to before coming here that said like we know that this is a tough time we want to be on campus so we're going to be as safe as we can to make sure that we can continue the learning in the way that we're doing um i would say online classes are hard but like everyone knows that they're hard um and professors are trying to be accommodating and asking for feedback constantly saying what can you do to make my experience what can you do what can i do to make your experience better how can i change lectures how can i change problem sets how can i adjust to you guys because like this is a new thing for them too, and they're trying their darndest. So it's something we're working through together, um, but I really appreciate um, the fact that professors are being so willing to adjust um, given the new circumstances that we're in. Um, I can speak um, from the perspective of someone that is home. So um, I'm a junior, I'm been remote um, since, what is it now, March. Um, and like Oswaldo said, um, online classes are hard. It's definitely been an adjustment, but I found that especially this semester now that professors um, were prepared um, to do online versus I honestly just commend my professor so much for like adjusting so quickly to having to do online in the spring. I feel like they've definitely been trying to find strategies to make it a lot more bearable to avoid um, Zoom fatigue. So I have professors that, for example, will only have us meet on Zoom once as opposed to like three, two or three times a week. Um, you know, I'll have professors that are just like, you know what, we, we can wrap this up. We don't have to keep going. Um, a lot of professors will record their um, lectures or even discussion classes um, so that, um, you know, you can kind of tune in asynchronously if you'd like to. Those kind of things have been really helpful. My professors have been asking, you know, for a lot of feedback, like definitely more than normal. I think they really are conscious and really want to make sure that um, we um, are being supported. Um, and I've still been able to continue, you know, regular office hours and stuff like that which has really, really been helpful. So yeah, I, I really, I do think that my professors have made a really great effort. 
Um, I definitely um, like I'm not doing the same level of activities I was before because a lot of my activities were tutoring and um, even though there's online options like I ended up kind of scaling back. Um, but I actually did attend a club meeting yesterday um, for the Swarthmore Africa Student Association, which was really fun. It was nice to see all those friendly faces that I hadn't seen in a while. So yeah, clubs and stuff were definitely happening. Um, oh yeah, a couple of weeks ago, some friends and I participated in the Swarthmore Quizzo, which is like this um, like a trivia quiz that you can do um, and there's a cash prize and we won, which was really, really great. So um, yeah, there's definitely activities. There's definitely still things going on and I'm looking forward to going back as a junior next semester, fingers crossed, or going abroad, but that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> to add really, really quickly, um, I just wanted to make it clear that Swarthmore is trying to be really accommodating for students with special circumstances. So I am a junior and I am on campus right now and that's because I'm an international student and I petitioned to be here. And so Swarthmore was really understanding of my situation and didn't want me taking classes from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. every single day. And so they, you know, they told me that I could come back and be on campus. And so they are really looking out for students um, no matter what your situation is. And so even though only freshmen and sophomores were technically supposed to be here this fall, they were really inclusive for students like me that had other circumstances. Awesome, thank you. So it is, we have one minute left and I know Jack has to, to leave <laughs> right away. Um, so if you need to leave, that's, that's okay. Um, but we will, I'm going to just go around and favorite tradition um, before we wrap up. And just so um, everyone on here knows, uh, we and students are always available to you to ask questions, right? So this is not your only opportunity. Uh, my colleague, Yoquin, uh, who's here, will put links in the chat. She'll put our admissions email address. We have a whole Ask a Swati program with uh, students have their email addresses up. So, um, this doesn't have to be the end of the conversation. But yeah, if you just wanna everyone go quickly and say their favorite SWAT tradition. Um, Jack, if you wanna say yours and then bounce off, go for it. Uh, yeah, so my favorite SWAT tradition, I think is uh, our, it's, I think, I, I mean, the one that I've experienced uh, and I'll explain this in a sec, uh, is uh, first collection, which happens at the end of orientation week, your first year here. Uh, and it's basically, it's modeled after the, uh, the Quaker meeting for worship where everybody sits in silence. Um, in, the, in, the, in the original like Quaker meeting for worship, everybody sits in silence. And if anybody is moved to stand and speak, um, they're allowed to do so. In this one, we're given a couple prompts beforehand by the deans and administrators uh, to be like, you know, like uh, think about uh, things you're excited about or things you're nervous about going into your first year at Swarthmore. Uh, who are you now? Who would you like to be at the end of your time here? Um, and we all sit in the amphitheater, uh, which if you haven't seen pictures of the amphitheater, it's a gorgeous place uh, outdoors and a uh, really good place to sort of sit and like meditate a little bit. Um, and if anybody feels moved to speak, they're allowed to stand up and do so in front of their entire class. There's like a microphone so you can be heard by everybody. Um, I've been to two first collections, my own, and then I was working, doing some work for admissions um, in my uh, junior fall. So I was able to go to uh, that one. And I'm always really like, really touched by how vulnerable people are willing to get so early on uh, in their time of knowing each other. Um, and it's really like, uh, it's really time of like the solidification of that idea of community. Um, and sort of our, our connection to one another, which is really, really beautiful. At the end of uh, senior week, like basically like the night before you graduate, uh, there's sort of the mirror image of that, which is last collection where you uh, you get to gather with your senior class and all reflect on your time at Swarthmore and the things that you liked uh, and didn't like and things that you're gonna be taking with you wherever you're headed next. Uh, so I'm a really big fan of that. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, I'm on the Ask a Swati page if you have any more questions for me specifically, um, but I will be going now. Thank you. And I can go next to complete the, the, the round. Um, my favorite event at, or tradition, and I've seen it on the question page, is an event called Screw Your Roommate. 
uh, which is an awful name, but it's a very fun event. Um, on Valentine's Day, your roommate will set you up on a blind date. Um, they won't tell you who you're meeting, what they look like. They'll tell you the time to go to our dining hall Sharples and they'll put you into a costume. And your job is to find the matching costume or the costume that goes along with your own costume. And that's your date. Um, my roommate was very nice. I was, it was very easy to find my date. My freshman year when I did it, I was dressed up as a chicken nugget and there was only one other chicken nugget in the dining hall. So I figured out who my date was fairly quickly. Um, my favorite story about Screw Your Roommate was one time somebody put their roommate in an egg costume. And so the egg walked into Sharples and they like couldn't find who, um, who their date was like at all. Uh, and eventually there was only one other person sitting in Sharples alone and it was a person dressed up as a chicken and they were given the wrong times because the joke was who comes first, the chicken or the egg. And that was the entire joke. It's a punny experience, but it's overall a very fun experience. It's worth more. I can go. Um, I'm going to have to steal Jack's, but I do have a fun um, anecdote. Um, I also really, really love First Collection. And like Jack, I was able to attend twice. Um, once my freshman fall and then also my sophomore fall because I was doing, I was um, like a residential peer leader. So I got to attend like as an orientation group leader, which was really, really cool. Um, and when First Collection happened, um, like, you know, we're all sitting there, we have these candles, we're listening to our peers, it's really powerful. And afterwards, people kept on saying that um, if your candle blows out, then you won't make it through Swarthmore at, uh, during, like in four years. I don't know if any of you all heard that, um, but that's what everyone was saying. And I was like, oh my gosh, because I'm kind of superstitious, you know? I was like, okay, this candle cannot blow out. And my dorm was all the way across campus. Um, and my candle blew out like probably about five times. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a sign. Um, but what I will say is that I'm still here, I'm a junior. Um, nothing's happened so far, knock on wood. But um, every single time my candle blew, um, there was always someone there to light back up. There was always, even if it was a complete stranger, you know, someone that was in my class that was going to be with me for the next four years um, would see this, you know, girl freaking out because her candle was blown out because someone told her that she wasn't going to make it through Swarthmore, probably to scare me at this point because I've never heard anyone else that heard the story. Um, but there was always someone there to light my candle back. And this is all to say in my own corny way that um, there's definitely going to be times when you have, you know, a tough time at Swap, but there's always going to be someone there to help you out, even in that very, you know, that first day, um, right after orientation, um, when I didn't know anyone, um, you know, people would walk up to me and light my candle back up. And that's something that really stayed with me. And I'm really looking forward to the last collection. I know I'll cry, but um, it's really a beautiful tradition. I can go next. My favorite tradition also happens in Sharples, like the one that Josie mentioned, Screw Your Roommate. And it's called Primal Scream and it happens um, the day before the finals period starts. So that's usually the Sunday night um, before finals week begins. And what's really fun is that instead of serving dinner like you normally would in the evening, Sharple serves breakfast. And so you get to do breakfast for dinner and it's super late too, because you usually go in around 10 p.m. to Sharple's or maybe a little bit later. And what's really unique about Primal Scream Night is that instead of our usual dining staff that are behind serving us our food, it's a combination of some of our staff and our professors. So I've actually had some of my professors serve me like bacon at 10.30 p.m. before finals period started one year. And what happens is that at 11.59, everyone kind of gets ready. We're all getting hyped up. And then at exactly midnight, every single person in Sharples will get on the tables and stand up and scream at the top of their lungs. And it's just a way for all of us to let out our anxiety or stress or built up tension around finals and just do it all together. And so there's a lot of people, it's super loud, but it's definitely really fun and just a nice tradition that I think we have. Um, I guess I'm wrapping it up. I think the one that is easiest uh, for me is um, every every April Fools the engineering uh, department has a like engineering prank um, and they're always so different which I think is really great um, there there's a couple of really fun ones from before I was here um, one of which is if you know that Swarthmore has a big chair um, a couple of years ago they built the big chair but it was hanging from our science center 
Um, so overnight, these engineering students and facilities were able to like make a replica of this really big chair hanging from our science center and like cleared all the space around it in case it fell over, which it wasn't going to because they're engineers. Um, Another really fun one was um, our Arboretum. It takes really good care in maintaining signs for all of our plants. So every plant and tree is, has a sign on it. Um, and a couple of years ago, the um, engineering students made little plaques um, and put them on as replacement plaques onto every uh, shrub and plant overnight. So instead of like having the scientific name for like the cherry blossom, it just said like tree. Um, and they did this for every single sign and there's a lot of signs on campus. Um, so it was really a big collective effort. Um, and the most recent one we did was we made a giant pong um, like on Parish Beach. So you could actually go to Parish Beach and like use this giant slingshot to shoot a big ball into these really massive cups. Um, they're just fun things to do that people forget about until April Fool's and it's like, oh yeah, the engineering prank. Um, and they're always fun to see, yeah. Yay. Well, thank you all so much. I know we're eight minutes after, so I want to respect your time. We're going to end this webinar. But again, um, in the chat, y'all have seen my colleague Yoquin put links to our Ask a Swati page. So please don't hesitate to reach out to current students. They are the best way to figure out, is this place a good home for me? Um, but of course, admissions, we are happy to answer any questions you have. You can continue to go to more webinars and connect with us. Uh, good luck with your process. Students, Thank you so much. You all are amazing. Uh, it's so good to see you uh, over the webinar. I miss you all. Um, and yeah, have a lovely rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for coming.